Good afternoon. I'm Karen McDonald. I'm the Oakland County Prosecutor. Thank you for joining me this morning. It's been a devastating week for all of us as we continue to mourn the loss of the four children who were shot and killed in the week, this week in Oxford High School. We've heard some positive news that some of those injured in Tuesday's shooting have made some progress recovering from their physical injuries. While the physical wounds of the victims are starting to heal, the emotional wounds to the victims, students, and the entire community will last for years. I continue to work with Oakland County Sheriff Mike Bouchard and his team to stay close to the facts and evidence of this case as it continues to evolve. My role as the Oakland County Prosecutor is to seek justice for the victims of this tragedy. The family, friends, and loved ones of Hannah St. Juliana, Madison Baldwin, Tate Murr, and Justin Schilling, and the other victim, victims have had their lives shattered. As I mentioned a few days ago, I did have the opportunity to speak with the parents of the children who were killed. Additionally, my office has reached out this morning to all of the victims um, who were injured. And we continue to be dedicated to offering them services and support during this time. While the shooter was the one who entered the high school and pulled the trigger, there are other individuals who contributed to this to the events on November 30th, and it's my intention to hold them accountable as well. It's imperative we prevent this from happening again. No other parent or community should have to live through this nightmare. I have shared previously, and I will reiterate today, that gun ownership is a right, and with that right comes great responsibility. Based on the information and evidence I have received, today I am announcing charges against the shooter's parents. Jennifer and James Crumbly. The charges are as follows. James Crumbly is charged with four counts of involuntary manslaughter. Jennifer Crumbly is also charged with four counts of involuntary manslaughter. I will now publish the details that led to that decision and have already previously been made public, which allows me to comment on them in a swear to that has just taken place in the district court by Officer Tim Willis, Detective Tim Willis. The investigation into the school shooting incident at Oxford High School, which occurred on November 30th, 2021, has revealed that James Crumbly purchased a Sig Sauer 9mm model SP-2022 from Acme Shooting Goods in Oxford, Michigan on November 26, 2021. A store employee confirms that Ethan Crumbly was present with James at the time of the purchase. Per statute, James Crumbly completed ATF Form 309A, 5309A. On or about November 26, 21, Ethan Crumbly's social media posts reveal photos of the semi-automatic handgun, along with the caption, just got my new beauty today, including an emoji with hearts, Sig Sauer 9mm, any questions I will answer, end quote. Subsequent to the purchase of that weapon, one of Jennifer Crumbly's social media posts on about 11 27 21 read, quote, Mom and Sunday testing out his new Christmas present, end quote. On November 21st, 21, a teacher at the Oxford High School observed Ethan Crumbly searching ammunition on his cell phone during class and reported the same to school officials. Jennifer Crumbly was contacted via voicemail by school personnel regarding that son's inappropriate internet search. School personnel indicate they followed that voicemail up with an email but received no response from either parent. Thereafter, Jennifer Crumbly exchanged text messages about the incident with her son on that day, stating, quote, LOL, I'm not mad at you. You have to learn not to get caught, end quote. On November 30th, 21, the morning of the shooting, the next day, Ethan Crumbly's teacher came upon a note on Ethan's desk, which alarmed her to the point that she took a picture of it on her cell phone. The note contained the following. A drawing of a semi-automatic handgun pointing at the words, quote, the thoughts won't stop, help me, end quote. In another section of the note was a drawing of a bullet with the following words above that bullet, quote, blood everywhere, end quote. Between the drawing of the gun and the bullet is a drawing of a person who appears to have been shot twice and bleeding. 
Below that figure is a drawing of a laughing emoji. Further down the drawing are the words, quote, my life is useless, end quote. And to the night right of that are the words, quote, the world is dead, end quote. As a result, James and Jennifer Crumbly were immediately summoned to the school. A school counselor came to the classroom and removed the shooter and brought him to the office with his backpack. Counselor obtained the drawing, but the shooter had already altered it. The drawings of the gun and the bloody figure were scratched out along with the words, help me, and my life is useless. The world is dead and blood everywhere. Those were all um, altered by him. As the meeting, at the meeting, James and Jennifer Crumbly were shown the drawing and were advised that they were required to get the sh their son into counseling within 48 hours. Both James and Jennifer Crumbly failed to ask their son if he had his gun with him or where his gun was located and failed to inspect his backpack for the presence of the gun, which he had with him. James and Jennifer Crumbly resisted the idea of then leaving the school at that time, of, of their son leaving the school at that time. Instead, James and Jennifer Crumbly left the high school without their son. He was returned to the classroom. When the news of the active shooter at Oxford High School had been made public, Jennifer Crumbly texted to her son at 11.22, I'm sorry, at 1.22 p.m., quote, Ethan, don't do it, end quote. At 1.37 p.m., James Crumbly called 911, reporting that a gun was missing from his house and he believed his son may be the shooter. Further investigation revealed that the six-hour nine-millimeter handgun purchased by James Crumbly was stored unlocked in a drawer in James and Jennifer's bedroom. The gun recovered from the shooter at the school after the shooting was the same gun that was purchased by his father James Crumbly on November 26, 2021, in the presence of his son. Based upon the foregoing, the Oakland County Prosecutor's Office requested and received um, authorized, we charged four counts of involuntary manslaughter as to James Crumbly and four counts of involuntary manslaughter as to Jennifer Crumbly. I want to be really clear that these charges are intended to hold the individuals who contributed to this tragedy accountable and also send the message that gun owners have a responsibility. When they fail to uphold that responsibility, there are serious and criminal consequences. As we work together to honor the lives lost and all of those impacted by the evil acts this week, justice for the victims and their families is at the forefront of today's announcement. We need to do better in this country. We need to say enough is enough for our kids, our teachers, parents, for all of us in this community and the communities across this nation. Happy to take questions now. One moment. Go ahead, Mr. Schkapp. Last night, the superintendent posted a video and suggested that uh, as a result of that meeting, they saw no reason to contact law enforcement if there was no danger. Have you seen his video that was posted to YouTube last night? And is there any thought you can share on that based on what you said today? I viewed portions of it and was um, briefed on the, the contents of the video. Were there any missteps by the school? Should they have reported right away to law enforcement after seeing those images? Any individual who had the opportunity to stop this tragedy should have done so. The question is, what did they know and when did they know it? I've laid out the facts that were sworn to this, mor this afternoon and are the basis for the charges here. Did you have a question? Yes. Uh, you said, you know, we need to do better than ADD change to prevent tragedies like this. It's extremely rare for parents to be charged with school shootings. Are you trying to set a new standard or is the evidence simply overwhelming in this case? I have tremendous compassion and empathy for parents who have children who are struggling and at risk for whatever reason. And I am by no means saying that 
an active shooter situation should always result in a criminal prosecution against parents. But the facts of this case are so egregious. Reading this document, looking at it, reading the words, help me, with a gun, blood everywhere, this doesn't just have impact me as a prosecutor and a lawyer, it impacts me as a mother. The notion that a parent could read those words and also know that their son had access to a deadly weapon that they gave him is unconscionable, and, it, and I think it's criminal. I, I, it is criminal. I believe that uh, the facts probably indicate that that's the, the, the result, but that would be a federal charge, and, and if, if that's appropriate to to make that, that I'm, I'm confident that they will. Question? What level of responsibility do you expect from the parents in situations like this? Well, again, I, I don't think that this is um, a unique or unusual interpretation. When you give your child access to a deadly weapon, when you indicate that you're buying a weapon and it's, you sign that it's for yourself, yet clearly based on the, the statements of the shooter, the statements of mom, that was his gun. And then we have the searching of ammunition. We have mom saying, at least you didn't get caught. We have the next morning drawing essentially uh, almost explicitly what he was about to do. I, I mean, I, ex I expect parents and, and, and everyone to, to have humanity and, and to step in um, and, and stop, stop a potential tragedy. Are they in custody already? I'm, I'm, I'm not going to make a comment on that. Can you give us some more detail on the meeting between the parents and the school? You said they're resistant to having their son pulled out of class that day. You know, hours later, he went on to, to do the shooting, and, you know, there was no communication from the parents that he may have access to a handgun and may be in possession of a handgun after they had been, you know, publicly on social media. I can confirm them. what I um, just stated, which is that they, they did not indicate to school officials or to their son um, and inquire about the whereabouts of the gun or the existence of the gun, to my knowledge. But the school pushed to, to have him removed and they were resist. Can you give us more detail on that? I'm not aware. I can't comment on it at this time. But the school, he was not removed from the school. He was returned back to class with his backpack where we have reason to believe the gun, the gun was stored in the backpack. Did you have a question right here? Not that we've been advised, no. Do you know if uh, between the first incident and the second at the school, the two teachers or whoever, do, were each aware of what had transpired, like the teacher number two, was, was that teacher aware of what happened on day one, was it just five days? I can't speak to that. I don't, okay. I don't know. And the other thing I have is for the families. Have you briefed them on what your investigation has found, specifically with the school? I have spoken to the parents. Um, and indicated the nature of the charges that might be um, coming. I have not spoken about the school. Okay, and what was their reaction in terms of your communications with them about some of this? These people are in incredibly deep, horrific pain and grief. Um, their reaction is as you expect. They will want anyone who had the opportunity to stop this from happening to have done it. I can't comment on that. Is your office looking at anybody else uh, for charges other than school officials? The investigation is ongoing. Why Does the school have any reason to believe, or the teachers have any reason to believe, that he had a weapon on him that day? I've stated what was known to the individuals, what what the search indicated, and ammunition what the document, I, I, I stated every single sentence that was on that document. So I, I suppose you should draw your own conclusion. The conclusion I draw is that there was absolute reason to believe this, this individual was um, dangerous and disturbed, and I'll leave it at that. Is the district fully cooperating with the investigation at this point? 
I don't. I mean, I haven't conducted the investigation, so I can't. I can't say. Prior to the shooting, did the district superintendent's office know about the issue that happened in the high school? Did, did it stay in the high school, or did someone in the high school actually go to the superintendent's office or the administration and say, "This is what we have going on"? I don't. I don't have any information about that at this time. Hindsight being what it is, how was how was this young man allowed to go back to class, given the circumstances you've described? The severity you're talking about, you mentioned it's still under investigation. And there are victims too, I'm not trying to assess blame, but yet they let him back in class with this type of severity. How does that happen? I'm not going to give you a political answer, and I'm not going to cover for anybody, and I'm just going to say what I think, and that is, of course he shouldn't have gone back to that classroom. Of course he shouldn't have. And and I, I don't have... Um, ill feelings or negative feelings about any anyone and I I but of course he should have he should not have been allowed to go back to that class and I believe that that is a universal um, position and and I'm not gonna chastise or or attack but yeah I mean it but you have the task of reviewing whether there's criminal negligence there I do, and then the, the investigation is ongoing. Were these involuntary manslaughter charges the strongest possible charges you were considering for the parents? It's the uh, strongest possible charge that we could prove um, and that there's probable cause to, to charge. So obviously it's illegal for a minor to own a handgun. What, what are Michigan's laws regarding bringing uh, a child to a firing range and, and practicing with them? State that in a little bit, I'm not sure where we're at. Good question. Michigan's laws are woefully inadequate. We don't have a safe storage law. We, we're not legally required to store your weapon in a safe manner. Children are allowed to attend with their parents so long as their parents is present. So the answer to that question is we don't have strong enough laws. Have you uncovered any evidence from before the gun purchase and the days leading up to this that shows what his state of mind was? Were the parents aware what his state of mind was? There's evidence about state of mind prior to that day. I can't comment it, on it, and it, not, it is not related to to the um, allegations that, it, that we're making at this time. Yes. Are any of the teachers injured in the shooting? One of the teachers who may have entered the complaint? I don't believe so, but I, I can't say that for certain. Prosecutor, how long was the plot? You, you described it as premeditated. How long had it been meditated? Long enough. Long enough. <clears throat> yes. One, point, one second. Go ahead. You said that at one point the father became aware that the gun was missing. Is there any indication that he might have known the gun was missing before the shooting or during or before that uh, meeting with the principal? Upon hearing that there was an active shooter on that day, Mr. Crumbly drove straight to his home to look for his gun. I think that's all I need to say about that. Would the gun shop perhaps be liable if they could see that the weapon was being purchased for a 15-year-old, not really for the father? Based on what we've review, reviewed, the, the gun shop owner is, is not under investigation. Do you know at any point during these meetings with the counselors and the parents if there was any talk to reach out to the on-site SRO officer with these concerns? Whether they did or not? Or, or if there was talk to reach out to them why they didn't, if there was concerns enough to bring the parents in? I don't know. I, I don't think we have, the at this point, um, full statements that that I've reviewed. A lot of, uh, you know, we've been here now for a few days and talked to the law enforcement and the sheriff's people, and uh, people are really angry at the school board. I mean, obviously there's issues with the parents, but there are there is a lot of anger with this school. I, I know it may not be your responsibility to see this right here, but since you're the first person all these days to talk about this what is your response to that I'd be angry too and I am but that doesn't mean that there's a criminal um, culpability but yes I'd be angry I would be angry I am angry I'm angry as a mother I'm angry as the prosecutor I'm angry as a, a, a person in that lives in this county uh, I'm angry there there were a lot of things that could have been so simple to prevent 
and yes, there was a perfectly executed response, and and he was apprehended immediately, and, and we have great law enforcement and, and good training. But I said before, four kids were murdered, and 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 then seven more injured. So, so yes, I think we should all be very angry, and we should take a very hard look at what is in place in terms of criminal responsibility, what gun, gun owners are required to do. And again, I, I will say this every single hour on the hour, and I think that I have, I am not here to say that people shouldn't own guns. I know lot, a lot of people who own guns, but they do so responsibly. And it's your responsibility, it's your duty to make sure that you don't give access to this deadly weapon to somebody that you have reason to believe is going to harm someone. And it is our position that on that morning, particularly that morning, but, but also the, the day before, but that morning, looking at that drawing, it's, it, it's impossible not to conclude that there was a reason to believe he was going to hurt somebody. I don't have any information. One more question, yes? Um, Yes. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, can you confirm the date that Ethan, or the suspect, was searching the ammo on his phone? It was the day before the shooting. Okay. And um, can you confirm the name of the gun shop where they got it, where they got the gun? It was Acme. And then one more question. You said two. Okay. On, were they on Zoom the day leading up to Thanksgiving, and is that related to this threat? I can't speak to that. I know that there were in-person classes on that day. Thank you very Thank much. You.